How you guys doing? This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. This episode, the highlighted item, is something totally unique that I've never done before. It is a theropod track. Now, this is a cast. This is a mold of a theropod. For some of you, theropod means meat eater. This is a little predatory dinosaur track. This thing looks really cool. It is item 3552, and it sells for $13.95, so it is absolutely affordable. I even like it because it has little felt bottoms just to put on a desk, so you can kind of put it on your desk. One of the things that's difficult about dinosaur footprints is figuring out who made the tracks. So they actually give scientific names to the track itself. So if you ever read about a dinosaur, like if you look at a track and it tells you the name like Brontopodus, well, there's not an animal named Brontopodus, but there's an animal that left a footprint and we named the footprint Brontopodus. Does that make sense to you guys? I hope it does. Because a lot of times people write to me and ask me, tell me about such and such. And you write back and you say, that's not the name of a dinosaur. That's the name associated to a track. And so it's kind of a, a sort of a, a, a bogus name for the animal that left the footprint because we cannot say with certainty who left the track. Now, by the shape of the foot, by the sharp points, the nail points, this is definitely a theropod. It's a predator, but we just don't know who. But this is kind of a cool little one. I think the original track came from Utah. I believe that's where it came from. I think it came from Utah. So anyway, really kind of a neat piece if you want to add something to, uh, to a collection that's a cool piece. All right, let's go. Frank from Stratford, Connecticut. Hello, Mr. Blossing. Hey there, Frank. Good to hear from you. I'm so glad you're back and I hope you're doing well. Frank, I'm glad to be back. I forgot how much I enjoyed doing these and uh, I, I'm, I, I wish I could do more of them. I got to figure out a way to do more of them. Anyway, I'm glad I'm back too. My question is, since they coexisted with each other, which Tyrannosaur would win in a fight? Gorgosaurus or Despletosaurus? Thanks for answering my question and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Well, thank you, Frank, for asking, uh, or for writing to me and I hope your day is going well too. Um, it is easier to sort of theorize who could win in a fight when the animals actually lived together or maybe came in contact with each other. So Gorgosaurus and Despletosaurus, Despletosaurus is the heavier of the two. He seems to be better suited for taking on the horned dinosaurs. Gorgosaurus and Albertosaurus, those are more slender, and I believe that they were better suited for killing duckbills. So if these animals saw each other, I would guess that Despletosaurus would have a little bit of an advantage because of the kind of prey that I think he hunted. When you're fighting heavyweights and you're fighting big guys, you seem to be able to hold your own in a fight. So uh, plus, the horned dinosaurs are going to fight back more. The duckbills are going to flee. So if you're used to chasing somebody and catching him and biting him, and somebody else is used to getting into a full-on scrape with the guy ramming you and trying to punch you, you're going to be better suited for fighting. So my best guess, uh, Frank, would be Despletosaurus would win. All right, Philip from Stratford, Connecticut. Hi, DG. I love your videos, and I have two questions. Philip, thank you. It's very kind of you. I'm glad you like them. Do you collect prehistoric animal toy figures and models? I do, and I was just curious. First question, yes, I do. Now, not a lot, not as much as I used to, but I have like some from a company called Batat, and then there was an early collection from the museum in England. I cannot remember what they're called, but those I have wrapped up and put away. I have the entire collection. Uh, those I keep. And then finally, I also collect the dinosaurs from a company called Marks. Now, those are the dinosaurs I loved as a child, so that's why I collect them. They're not scientifically accurate. They're not very big. They're very small. But those are the ones that I collect. But I know there are some amazing uh, toy lines out there, pretty amazing. So I'd love to see a picture of all the stuff you have one day. Okay, so to your other question, what are your thoughts on Amphicelius? Do you think it could have been real? Thanks so much and have a great day. Okay, Amphicelius, for those of you that may not have heard of him, it was a few bones from a gigantic sauropod. At one time, thought to be the largest dinosaur that ever lived, but the bones disappeared. They're gone. Nobody knows where they went. At least I, I don't think they've ever figured it out. Those bones are gone. Um, I don't know if they got misplaced or mislabeled or destroyed or stolen, <laughs> but whatever the case, there were some images I think very ancient in images, and then some drawings that they did when they found them. So I do believe the dinosaur existed, and I do believe he was gigantic, but unfortunately I just don't know enough about him because what, exi what evidence existed, poof, is gone. All right, Jake from Newark, New York. 
Hello, Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing? I'm sorry. I just saw a commercial a few minutes ago about that, Jake. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Blessing. Hope you're doing well. Jake, call me George. Call me anything. You can call me a jerk for that terrible joke I just said if you want to. That's fine with me. But I'm doing well, Jake. And, and thank you so much for the courtesy. I've been fascinated by paleontology for a very long time. I would just be interested in your input on whether or not Spinosaurus was a quadruped. I believe it was because modern aquatic animals like penguins, crocs, and otters have short legs to make them more hydrodynamic. Thank you very much, Jake. Jake, what an interesting thing. When I saw the, the new version of Spinosaurus, he looks weird, doesn't he? He looks weird not standing up on two legs like the giant predator we think him as. But if he was more squattish, um, it certainly would have made easier swimming, that's for sure. You know, if, if you are made for catching fish and your nose is made for catching fish and your teeth are made for catching fish, your body needs to be made for catching fish. And if he is indeed swimming around, he's got to be more, what did you call it? Hydrodynamic, which is a very impressive term. Wow, he's not aerodynamic, he's hydro. Because hydro, hydro means water. What a smart person, Jake. Very smart guy. Um, so yeah, his body has to be to be able to chase fish. So, uh, you know, an elephant couldn't catch a fish because an elephant's body is so big and bulky, it can't move through the water very quickly. You gotta be able to move around fast and that short quadruped squat body would have been more efficient at that. So I think he probably was that way. All right, Judson, uh, Justin from Midvale, Utah. Yo, DG, yo, Justin. <laughs> Look how hip I am. I'm so hip, it's amazing. Okay, you said before that you think that anything is possible in parentheses. So how likely do you think it is that they could find a non sinonathid over Raptosaurus in North America? I don't know what language you're speaking and I don't know what you just called me. I'm kidding you. <laughs> All right, Justin. Um, I'm glad you put possible in parentheses because I don't think everything is possible, but I think in science we don't want to put such limitations on ourselves. In other words, I don't believe Tyrannosaurus rex could fly. I don't think that's possible. Is it possible that he was very fast and could jump farther than we think? It's possible. Maybe not likely, but it's possible. So I'm glad that you identified what I say by possible, and I'm glad you notated that. That's very good. Okay, will they ever find a non sinonathid over Raptosaurus in North America. I couldn't begin to guess. Justin, you just stumped me. I don't have any idea. I don't know what a non sinonathid over Raptosaurus would be. I know what an over Raptor is, I know what Sinonathus is, but I don't, I don't know what, I'd have to think about what it is to be what it isn't. You know what I mean? That's a very confusing question. It's a great question. Stumped me, man, stumped me. So the only answer I'm gonna give you is the cheesiest answer you can give in science. It's possible. <laughs> All right. Ganeshram from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Hello, DG, I hope you're doing good. Thank you very much, my friend. And I hope I pronounced your name Ganeshram correct. Uh, that's very kind of you. I hope you and your family are doing well. Here's my question. What is the difference between Rajasaurus and Majungasaurus? Their skulls look so identical. Thanks for answering my question and have a nice day. Okay, Rajasaurus, I think the main difference between Rajasaurus and Majungasaurus, or if you still call it Majungatholus, I believe the main difference is that little knob on top of Majungasaurus' head. I don't think Rajasaurus has that, does he? I don't think he does. I think Rajasaurus has a more smooth top, so that right off the bat would be a difference. Here's the main thing that would be difference between them. Um, Rajasaurus lived in India, Majungasaurus lived in, uh, on the island of Madagascar. And at one time, they may have been continentally connected and they may have been able to cross back and forth. But I believe Majungasaurus is evolving differently than Rajasaurus. So even though they may have been related and were cousins, I don't think, I think that if you actually had the two skulls side by side and you could observe them personally, I think you would start to see a lot of variances. Like for instance, look at the shape of the orbit. I believe that Rajasaurus's orbit, or look at the antorbital fenestra, the hole right in front of the eye. I think the shapes of those are different. So when you compare skulls of animals, you've got to take it to a much deeper depth 
to observe these variances. Now, maybe you have observed them and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they are almost identical. I don't know. I, I haven't looked at the two, so I, I can't tell you. I've seen Majungasaurus, but I've never seen Rajasaurus. So I would just say this, um, Ganeshram, I would go back, if you have images of the two, and really look closely at every single section of the skull. Take section by section and compare them. What you might find is they are either as close as you think they are, or maybe they are much more different than you thought. All right, finally, Alyssa from Karlstad, Varmland, Sweden. Hi, DG, nice to see you back at answering our questions. Alyssa, I am so happy to be back, and thank you for taking the time to write to me. Um, even if birds are related to dinosaurs, I still see differences with their body structure. I'm not talking about wings, but more specifically, their legs. When I research the anatomy of Velociraptor and ostriches, you see way different leg construction. What's the cause of that, and what different effects do those legs have? Thank you for reading my questions. Wow, very advanced question. Very advanced question, Alyssa. Um, the reason why bird feet and legs are different than dinosaur feet and legs is because birds became more advanced, meaning they are losing features that aren't necessary and they're evolving to become more efficient at what they do. So if you went back to look at the earliest birds and the earliest theropods, they are very, very, very similar. But as the birds take a different path for how they live, their body takes on a different form. So Velociraptor and ostrich legs are different because ostrich legs have to propel a much larger, heavier animal. So Velociraptor legs can remain very thin and gracile because they don't have to support that much weight. Uh, does that, I hope that makes sense. So in other words, um, if you start off two animals at the same time, but they live a little different life, they're going to look very similar at the beginning of the race, but they're going to look totally different by the end of the race because this one got there on a different path than this one. Gosh, I hope that makes sense, Alyssa. I hope that made sense to you. I suspect, based on the quality of your question, I suspect you completely understand exactly what I'm saying. All right, you guys, I've enjoyed shooting these. I'm gonna try to shoot a few more. So um, remember, when you watch, sometimes it's two or three days between the day I shot the video and that we can edit it and get it loaded on YouTube. So, uh, so, so keep watching. Sometimes you may send in a question on a Monday and you don't see it until the following Monday. That's the reason why. All right, everybody, have a great day. Today is Saturday for me, so I'm going to go have a good weekend because I'm done filming for the afternoon. Take care, everybody. I'll see you soon.